Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Full Time Show and Fan Reaction and Match Review. I'm here with my boy Turkish. How are you doing, bro? All good, man. We have just witnessed Arsenal beat Wolves at Molyneux 2-0, and in doing so, they've gone back to the top of the table, and in my estimation anyway, the title race is back on. Is that something you would agree with, Turkish? Or? Yeah, it was never it was never off, really. Mm. Yeah, true. But I think if we hadn't won today, then you might as well have said, yeah, that's it. No, if we hadn't won, if we don't win any game now for to the rest of the season, it's done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so, the position we've left ourselves in, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah I mean, you know, it, it was a tricky game potentially because Wolves, we know they're, they're a capable side. Uh, we know they're suffering from a lot of injuries, but they were at home. Um, and on their day, we know that, I mean, they've beaten City on their own ground this season. So we know that they're a half decent side and we obviously were coming off the back of two not very good results to say the least. So the pressure was on, but I'm pleased to say that the guys stood up to it today. Uh, they started the game well, uh, unlike the previous couple of games where we've made good starts and not scored. Today we did get a goal courtesy of Leandro Trossard, who for me anyway, I thought he was man of the match. Um, I was very curious, Turkish, to see that in the second half, if we could maintain that momentum that we'd built up in the first half. Because in the previous two games, where we'd made decent starts and not scored, we tailed off in the second half. Today, like I said, we scored in the first half. I was very keen to see what the approach would be in the second half, but I was pleased to see that um, they went out very positive. In fact, you could argue that that first 15, 20 minutes... Or well, certainly the first 15, anyway, of that second half was probably our best spell of the whole game. Yeah, it was. It was. Mm. Um, I thought we probably had to try and get a goal then, but in the end, we saw the game off. Um, yeah, out today, I wasn't really after a performance. I don't think we got a great performance. I think we had moments in the game. Um, it was just about three points, Laurie. Mm. It was just about mm. three points, man. We just had to get the job done, you know, brush off the the pain of the last seven, <laughs> ten, 10 days, you know, yeah. Munich, Aston Villa, not easy because, as you know, when I look at the league table, I just think to myself, if we had beaten Aston Villa, we would have gone four points clear of City today. Yeah. Yes, they would have had a game in hand, but it's very different to, but you know what? It is well, really they is, always say so. it's best to have the, the points on the board than the games in 100%. hand. 100%, we learned that last season, but yeah. you know, the, the argument last season was Arsenal don't have the, the balls to hold it and Arsenal don't have the experience to hold it. Mm. which proved to be true this year let's see if you know if, if Man City can can mm. recoup those points yeah. right I'm going to ask you something fairly controversial maybe or fairly from left field but um, anyway let, let me hear what you think about this so obviously we lost to Bayern we're out of the Champions League which is disappointing but the corollary to that is now we've got all our league games to concentrate on could that be a blessing in disguise? No. no I ain't looking at it like that. Yeah, blessing in this yeah, that's another bigger fish to fry. Uh, that's, that, that's yeah, it's, mm -hmm. I'm not yeah. No. You're not with that, no? No. No, no, that's fair enough. FA yeah. Cup Champions League to get eliminated from those competitions could never be looked at as a blessing. That's mm. you know, that's a way for people to cope with it. Yeah, and it's a coping mechanism, and, yeah, and for sure. Really, yeah. you know, it's every, a crap every competition. To lean on, I guess. You know, mm. we're, we're, we're back into the into talk about us being, you know, a potentially great team. I say potentially because I feel like, you know, we have all the, the you know, assets and variables that tell you we're a great team, but we haven't got the trophies yet, which confirm yeah. we're a great team. So, you know, if we're on we'll the see. cusp of that, then there's yeah. no looking at FA Cup, Champions League, Premier League. There's no prioritising. There is, you know, going all in. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, Fine, thanks, Turkish. So you've heard from myself in Turkish. We've given us, uh, we've given you our brief thoughts. And again, let's hear what the caller's got to say. Let's see his first start. Ryan, yes, Ryan. What? Yes. What? Are you, you there, saying, Ryan? Can you hear us? Ryan, Ryan, what's good? Hello. Yeah, Hello, yeah. yeah. We can hear you. Can you hear us? Ryan's having some difficulty. I saw him so bad. Ryan, you, 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 you're not a newbie to this. What's going on? <laughs> can you hear me? Yeah, we yeah, can we hear can you. Hear you yeah, but... yeah, yeah. Guys, can you hear me? Yeah. 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 Speak. I can't hear you. He can't hear oh, us. He can can't we drop him us. out and put uh, him back on? Uh, can oh, you no, hear me he... now? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, big up, Laurie in Turkish. Come on. Um, yeah. 
Mixed emotions, man. I can't even lie. These mixed these emotions. We just days, won. I, well, I know. Happy with content with today, but I'm talking with like how Bayern Munich and Aston Villa and Bayern Munich went over the two legs of those. But with today, I'd say it's a professional performance. I'd say we controlled and dominated most possession of the ball. I thought Declan Rice was phenomenal tonight. Like for me, Odegaard grabbed the game by the scruff of his neck as what a captain should do. But for me, I just look at how we played and it was cagey in certain spells. Like, I know when we went 1-0 up, I did feel like we deserved to be 1-0 up towards the ending of the first half. But I'd be lying to you too if I said that if there weren't times, you know that saying, the longest 1-0, Wolves mm. are still in this game. And the game overall, the reason why I said mixed emotion, mixed emotions, Laurie, is because overall this game doesn't fill me with massive confidence to say that we can go on and win the remaining of our five games and win this league. But it's another clean sheet. I'm happy for Saliba, Gabriel and Rayo that they've kept Wolves out. And we just have to keep ticking over and just hope that City drop points, hopefully. That's all we can do. But yeah. I'm glad that we're back on winning ways and Trossard yeah. had a good game today as well. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I agree with a lot what you said there. I mean, first and foremost, for me, the win represents the title race being back on because that's myself and mm -hmm. Turkish was both agreeing upon. If you drop points yeah. today, you might as well say that's it. So... The fact that we've won means that the, it means that the title race is still back on. Um, we're playing Chelsea on Tuesday. They got beat today. I would imagine they're feeling pretty flat. So we are going yeah. into that game against Chelsea on Tuesday with a good deal of momentum. Enough mm -hmm. momentum, I think, in which to beat Chelsea. And if we can do that, that means we'll be four points ahead of City by the time they next play. And that could be psychologically a very good thing for us. Turkish, your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean that's exactly what I just said about the four. The, you know, I, I was looking at it differently. That's why I'm, I'm with Ryan. Mixed emotions. This this could have been us going clear at the top and really putting the pressure on. You know, we should have beaten Villa. We should have fucking beaten Villa. You know, Lille have gone on to score two goals against them since. Mm. It's just us that failed to break them down for some reason. But listen, like I said, it's a it's a new game week. It's a new result. We've got three points and we're back on top of the table. So I won't. Yeah. Think too much into it. it it's, it's, hard, it's, it's, it's hard not to dwell on last week, but you also got to mix it in with this week. Because, listen, I, I can't stress how few I was last time. I was more upset with the Villa game more than the Bayern Munich game because I felt like, similar to what you just touched on, Turkish, and yeah. you said it very well, to be honest. If we had a beat Villa, we would have been four points clear right now. And yes, City would have had a game in hand, but it's the opposite way, if that makes sense now. Whereas, mm. We're what? We're point. We're like a point clear of them, but yet obviously City have to play. And obviously, if we do beat Chelsea, which I do think we'll beat Chelsea on Tuesday night, I don't think by any stretch of the imagination it'll be an easy game. I I said it to my guys in my group chats. Do not be fooled where Chelsea are on the Premier League table. When they when it comes to the big big games, they step up and Poch gets them going, man. So I think it'll be a hard game, but I do think we will put Chelsea to the sword on Tuesday night. But the only thing I could ask for is that Arsenal give it their all and we take it all the way to the end, man. Because last season was heartbreaking when we just <laughs> fell off towards the end. We almost just handed Man City an early summer present, Laurie, man. I, I couldn't believe it, man. I couldn't yeah, believe it. Yeah, yeah. Honestly. But listen, I'm happy that Arteta has spoken to the boys and every single team talk from now to the end of the season is going to be pivotal, man. Like, Absolutely. getting his instructions across to everyone and making sure that everyone's doing their jobs. It, listen, I don't, I don't want to come across as me touching on certain players, but I look at Smith Rowe and Eddie. I think deep down, Arteta already knows what players he's selling in the summer. I look oh, at, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Ed, I look at Eddie and Kete, I, I look at Smith Rowe, listen, I, I do love Smith Rowe because he comes from the hair end, but all this sentimental feeling with players coming from the hair end. If, if Villa or anyone was to give us 25 to 30 million for Smith Rowe, thank you very much, Smith Rowe, and I appreciate what you've done for Arsenal <laughs> Football Club. But Arsenal, okay. we're, no, we're, we're no longer in a place where we can just keep waiting on players like Smith Rowe to level up. Saka and Martinelli have left Smith Rowe, in my opinion. But mm. listen, there's so many things you can touch on, but I'm just ha happy that Arsenal won tonight, man. And we okay. just got to keep the pressure on. 
Okay, Ryan, thanks very much. Um, good call as Go always. Guys, no. Got a few no, other no. guys waiting for their say. So, But listen, in the meantime, thank you very much. Give us a call back uh, after the game on Tuesday, please. Take care. Definitely. Kian. I've got Kian. Hey, guys. Hey, what's going on, bro? Ah, not too bad. Kind of um, been, a, been a tough, I think, week up until today. And I suppose now that I, we got, I got to see Chelsea lose earlier, which was, <laughs> which is great. So hopefully they'll be suffering now against us on, on Tuesday. So that'll be a nice Yeah, they, they, they do reward. say that semi-final defeats are one of the hardest things to recover from because you're in that stage where you're, you're so near but yet so far. So I would imagine that the Chelsea squad is probably not at their best moment. Um, but listen, they yeah. are professionals. I'm sure they will come again on Tuesday and um, they will give it their all. But I do think it's been a good day for us. Us, uh, them losing today and us winning is good for us, let's yeah. be honest. Um, do yeah. you agree with myself and Turkish that the title race is back on or are you not as optimistic as us? Yeah, I think it, it is. Like, look, I know we're a point behind and the way to look at it is they're... No, no actually, we're a point it, ahead. It, we're a point ahead. Sorry, yeah, sorry, point ahead, but we were a point behind uh, coming in today, I'm yeah. sorry. Um, and, like, uh, at the end of the day, if we win on Tuesday, as, as we said, four, we're four points clear and the pressure moves straight to Man City to have That's to it. basically stay 100%. Yeah. And at the, at the end of the day, any slip up from Man City, if we can just continue to just get the wins and just keep going... I, I, I do think we can do it. Like that's the main focus. I think we need to take not focus on um if we can do it. I think the main focus should be game by game now. I think Absolutely. for the rest of the season. Focus on just getting the wins. And you could see today, as Declan Rice said uh, in midweek, that the lads were uh, were driven after the, the result against Bayern to make sure make up for it. And to be honest today I did see a lot of heart in the performance today from the players. Like I think Declan Rice was very good today as well. And you could see he was making those bursts to try and get balls across, try and get goals. The only downside I think to today was how our clinical side it hasn't been great. I think the last three or four games, like um, the amount of times we've put today, especially we put the ball across the box, but there was no one there to, to, bring it home or miss control or something in the box when when we could have scored more goals yeah but you make a very good point yeah, yeah we had, we, had, uh, we had 28 shots on goal today and yeah we scored two goals on another day that could have been four maybe even five I thought we yeah. dominated most of that game and should have won by didn't feel like two. it was that many shots though no but statistically that is it accurate didn't feel like 28 that shots. shots yeah and I, I think I just think I, I hope that we can just keep it up and obviously in our last few games make sure we get it. I think as well as obviously Chelsea, you, you, our next two games are probably the biggest games of the season when you look at it mm. or next three really. Um, I think, listen, I, I slightly disagree with that because I thought today is a massive game because if we yeah. don't win today, you might as well, you might as well say that's it. Uh, and I said yeah. that, I'm not being wise after the event. I actually said that before the game. If you don't beat yeah. Wolves, or especially after the week we've had, if you don't beat Wolves, you might as well mm -hmm. just start to concede the title. Turkish, yeah. got any thoughts on that? Laurie, it's not just Wolves, it's any game. Yeah, I know, I'm taking yeah. each game as it comes. But what I'm saying is, I wasn't looking any further ahead. No, you can't. Than, yeah. uh, after than after the results. If we didn't we, beat Wolves, yeah. it's game over. After the results we've had, you can't look yeah. past any yeah. game now. Like, it, you know, people use these terms all the time one game at a time from March from November <laughs> from the start of the season mm. this is yeah. the true definition of it you absolutely know, we, we, we cannot look past any game now because I, I oh. do believe and I, again I've said this for a couple of weeks now I do believe that City will drop points I mean I watched the game today yeah. with them uh, against Chelsea and yes they did deserve to win yeah. in the end but this is not the same City team that was marauding no. last season. I mean, they are quite open at the back. Chelsea had a number of chances, which they didn't take. Um, and, so, and you look at it, I, I think Spurs can get something off them because yeah. City have, don't, don't have a great record in the league against um, Spurs when you look over the last four or five years. So, like, there is potential that even they could get a draw in there and if they get mm. a draw and, and we win the rest of our games, we win the league potentially mm. on, on goal difference, which is what we want at the end of the day. 
I'm looking at City, right? And I don't think that they won't drop points between now and the end of the season. Now, that could well be us as well and Liverpool. So it's going to be tight. Yeah. They're all, I think yeah. all three clubs could drop points. I really do. Probably will. You know what I mean? So um, so do you believe that the tyre race is back on? Tyre race is back on and it's it's down to us to make sure we stay there till the end of the season at the end of the day. And uh, as you say, it's a game by game time. So like I'll back, I'll back the club no matter what. Um, and uh, hopefully we can, we can get there. And mm. obviously I'll be there. I'll hopefully be at the Emirates hopefully last game of the season and and if we are, um, hopefully we'll be celebrating a title. I hope so. Um, was you happy with the team today? Or would there have been any other changes or not you would like to have seen? I don't agree with the whole Havertz starting in midfield. Yeah, I must say, I'm not with that either. I just, it's it's starting to annoy me that like I just feel Mikel just wants to find a way to put him in the team. Like I, I know he, he's he wanted to start Jesus, so maybe drop drop Havertz and bring him on or, or something, and and play someone like a Fabio Vieira or uh, a Smith Rowe in there or Jorginho or Party, just something different because uh, I just don't see how Havertz and I know Turkish, you probably agree with me. I just don't see how Havertz fits in that midfield anymore. I don't either. You can you can count me in on that. I mean, I'm yeah. starting to think that the manager, and I've thought this for a while anyway, I'm going to say it, but it's almost sometimes as if he wants to shoehorn habits in the team at any expense. There are certain players, Partey, for example, Fabio Vieira is another one, Smith Rowe. Yeah. These guys are not getting any minutes and they've been sacrificed at the altar of the, what I call the habits project. But anyway, listen, yeah. <laughs> slightly controversial ending. But listen, bro, thank you very much for your call. Uh, no worries. And, uh, make sure nice you give one. us a call after we beat Chelsea on Tuesday. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we'll do. Uh, yeah, well, thank nice you very much. Right. Love for the right, love. Next caller. Love for the love, bro. Yo, 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 hey, Lori. How yes. you doing, Lori? I'm how good, you doing, man. Turkish? All good, man. How are you? We got the father son combination, but we can't see your son. So yeah, yeah, there he is. Oh, there you go. Yeah, we need the main man in the picture. <laughs> right. So uh, we we. How's it going, Turkish? <laughs> come on, come on. It's, it's going well today. Today it's gone well. Good. Right, the floor good, is yours. Good. What What's your thoughts on that game? And, and how do you think that... Lori, uh, it, it's, uh, it's uh, really good to see the Arsenal win. Um, I never thought that uh, the title ch- case was over. Right. And, uh, you know, the last couple of weeks, Lori, I'll be honest with you, I've, I, I've been hoping to come on just so that I could say, I think... Us Arsenal fans were getting a little bit too entitled. This uh, the title doesn't belong to anybody. Just like it, it doesn't belong to City. Everybody mm-hmm. has to go out there and fight for it. Absolutely. And every now and then, while you're fighting for it, people like Villa are gonna come in and put up a really good challenge, you know, against you. Mm-hmm. And you can't start uh, uh, wincing about it. You gotta pick yourself up and go again. So that's very we're true. Lucky, well, luckily, we're not we're luck, we're not out of it. So you know, I, I was glad to see us dusting ourselves off especially since uh uh the loss against uh Bayern might have dented our spirits mm. and then you know we just uh got up and had a very professional win today yeah absolutely what what do you think um some people are surmising and i put it to turkish he didn't necessarily agree but some people are saying that um going out the champions league could in all likelihood be a blessing in disguise because the thought process being that now we can just concentrate on winning every single Premier League game left. Whether you're in the Champions League now, sometimes that can be a little bit harder because all the games and the pressure coming up. How, how do you feel about that? Do you think that going out the Champions League actually could benefit our title push? Yeah. You do? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what do you think, Al? Yeah, um, I want us to win everything. I want to win the FA Cup, Carabao Cup, preseason <laughs> trophies, Premier of course, League. Of course. I want, to, I want to win it all. But expectations change a lot can change over the course of a week we look yeah. like the f- title favorites and other teams are trying to win also we're not mm. the only team trying to win but any other day we're in the premier league so any day a crystal palace or aston villa can come and upset you at your at your home home ground yeah definitely very yeah. accurate i mean i it's my personal conviction that city and liverpool will drop points obviously mm. we we could fall into that category as well. But it's very possible that all three clubs could drop points. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's, that's 100% true. And, uh, you know, that's the reason why uh, 
you know, you just got to keep on believing. I, it was it was tough to see uh, uh, so many fans downtrodden and acting like it was all over. I never thought it was all over. Mm. I still kept believing. And those losses were tough to take. Mm. But Laurie, Turkish, I've got to say, how the mighty have fallen. <laughs> I felt embarrassed for, I felt embarrassed for KG and the sp- expressions the other day. <laughs> you know, they were over there, you know, in their hate along, cheering because Arsenal has gotten eliminated. That elimination, especially to, uh, coupled with City's loss, means that they could likely not be in the in the Champions League. Mm-hmm. And you, you know what I call that? You know, I've be, got a, I've got a phrase yeah, for that type of thing. I call that small club mentality. When you're hating, it, it really is. Uh, uh, like I said, up. it was embarrassing. It was. Yeah. It really was embarrassing. Um, so you know, I, I think it just shows that the the club is truly on the climb. You know. Uh, if you look, and you guys have said this the last couple of weeks, City lost quite a bit before they finally reached the the, the mountaintop. And mm-hmm. so did uh, Liverpool. You know, we are on the right trend. I think there's definitely things that need to be cleaned up. But Mikel has to uh, play people a little bit more. I was shocked that Party didn't get even 15 minutes against Bayern Munich because as you mm-hmm. saw him today, in those last 10 minutes, he really does help calm the situation. Mm-hmm. And pre- uh, presents himself as an outlet of the ball, you know, which could have created just that one-on-one mm. chance. I absolutely so couldn't understand yeah. why he didn't start today. Th- this thing about playing yeah. Habits in midfield. Okay, we won today. Habits didn't have a bad game, to be honest. I'm not like it's yeah. no shade at him. My beef is more with a manager. Like you got specialist midfielders. You got Habits. Yeah. There. You've got yeah. Smith Rowe. You've got Partey. These guys should be occupying that midfield. But you. you but it almost seems like he's trying to shoehorn Abbott's into the team at times. He will obviously tell you different, but that's how it looks to me. But anyway, listen, um, yeah. we've got to move on. I was going to bring Turkish in, but we've got to move on. Um, thank you very much, Thanks, Father sorry. and Son. Whenever, uh, we end, whenever we end these uh, talks, we just like to say one thing, you know, and that's up the Arsenal up. and come on, you got it! <laughs> <laughs> well said, well said, bro. Like yeah, love, love, love. Take care. I've got some super chats here as well. Um, they were coming in throughout the last few callers. So let me get them in. A couple from Lee. First one saying, three points, one. We have not lost in the Premier League this year until Kai came into midfield. Two, we have not lost this year until we had the title in our hands. Three, Saka needs to rest against bottom table teams. And he also goes on to say, if we don't win the league, Mikel Arteta change in the midfield against Villa will be a, will be a reason. Playing Saka into the ground as well and not being clinical. Mm. How do you think Saka played today? I actually thought he had a good game. Mm. Nah, I think you're forcing it. <laughs> really? You don't think he had a good game? I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying he was man of the match. I'm not saying he was outstanding. But he did a lot of good things today and he nearly scored a goal as well. Yeah, I mean, that that came right at the end, though. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just expect more. I mean, that's because he's shown more. So, you yeah. know, I'm not trying to, you know, get on to him now, but I just expect better. Well, um, yeah, you've got every right to expect better because, I mean, you know, he's supposedly a world-class player, which he, I believe he is. So, naturally, you want your world-class players to step up every time. That's the pressure of being a world-class player. Yeah. Um, now, yes, he has looked a bit jaded in recent games, but I thought today, though, I thought he looked bright on occasions. He, he had some good moments. And uh, I think he was where he, his position in starting that game today was justified, in my opinion. I don't know, man. I don't know. But we've got a couple more. Moose says, I saw all I need to see when Partey and Rice played the last 10 minutes. That's the best version of our midfield. I pray we see it again. And one's just coming from DOF saying, we are 11-1-1 in 2024 and upset. That run is incredible. We're excellent. This is just the Pep era. It is. Yeah. But well, there's no doubt that City are a formidable team. Uh, the history, books, money, the history know, books don't have sympathy. History doesn't care for, for sympathy, let's be honest. Right, OK, let's move on. Uh, we've got Michael on the line, and this could be poetic. <laughs> <laughs> Big there he is. Laurie. How are you doing? Laurie, Turkish, good to see you. I, I got to say, I am so happy to see Stephen and Alexander from Pittsburgh come back on this show. I haven't seen them forever. And there's like two of my favorite people on this on this channel. So I'm glad of that. Okay. Um, I, I want to make a point that Raya deserves credit today. Mm. That like that save he made off the post. Yeah, if yeah. he doesn't make that, it changes the game. 
And like, I have to confess that because he's smaller than Ramsdale, I've always assumed that he wasn't as good of a shot stopper. But I, I think what we're seeing now is that, no, he's got the reflexes to pull off the kind of saves that we were praising Ramsdale for. So I, I think he's I think we got to see that Raya bailed out the defenders in a lot of situations today. Yeah, uh, that was a very good save. Excellent save, in fact. And you're right. Had he, if he doesn't make that save and will score, we could be sitting here now talking things very different so I think give him credit for that. I think although, good although I, I would say this right and, and I, again I, i'm not being wise after the event I, I said things before so i'm going to stand on my word i would have advocated for ramsdale to start today not so much because rye has been playing badly but i just think that the whole team needed a bit of a shake up now the manager made three changes i would have probably made a few more i definitely would have had Partey playing i definitely would have had jesus up top uh, I would have benched Havertz. I would have had Reese Nelson on for Saka. I would have shook things up. But you know what? Um, you got to give the manager credit. In the end, he played the team that got the win. So, but yeah, that's that, that was my. Yeah, thoughts. I mean, maybe they should have flown to Dubai from Munich. <laughs> yeah, I said that earlier in the week. Probably wouldn't have had enough time right. to get back though. But, okay, yeah. no, second point. I think we need to invent a new number for Odegaard's position. Because oh, yeah. not only is he playing in the 10, but then he like makes the run after he does the pass. So he be almost becomes a false nine. Mm. So I think we should say that Odegaard is playing a 9.5. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> you know what? Um, I've got to say, Odegaard, what an impressive individual. For me, I'll be honest with you, I didn't think he played his best game today. But what you get with Odegaard is that he's nonstop trying, running. He's always trying to impact the games, always calling for the ball. And I'm so glad he got that goal at the end because he deserved that. Because even though he wasn't at his best today, he didn't stop trying. He didn't stop uh, calling for the ball. He didn't stop moving around. The press was on point. Everything was good from that perspective. Yeah. So I was really pleased for him. Okay. And my last point is, I feel like Saka is like a microcosm of the team in the sense that he really is world class. The only problem is he doesn't have the confidence to believe it all the time. And what I see in Saka is also what I see in the team is that we play our best when nobody thinks that we're any good. And like, yeah, right. I mean, you know, that, that in the last two years, we actually have become the equals of City and Liverpool and Bayern. It's just that when the spotlight is on us and everyone's saying, oh, my God, they're going to win the league. That's when all of our human frailties come out. Mm. And that's where you prove your world class. Oh, I agree. Like to become truly world class, we have to like develop the dominant mentality that City has. Yeah, yeah, and we have to. Okay. And we have to hold our nerve in the biggest moments and the the biggest stage. You know, mm. it's, it's, right. it's, 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 it's not... I, I think you could both be right, but what I would I would throw a little bit of caution in there because until the season is actually done, we don't know for sure. Because I think. There could be a few more twists and turns in this title race yet. I believe that City, Liverpool, and maybe even us as well, will drop points between now and the end of the season. I think it could be that tight. So I don't think there's any clear phrase. I guess you could have City as your um, favourites, but it's not like they're a shoe in if you see what I mean. I think that there could be a few twists and turns yet. What do you guys think? Oh, City are favourites. It's theirs it's there, it's there to lose. It's theirs to lose, but... Easiest listen, running. They, they, they got the points difference. I watched City anymore. today against Chelsea and they were not overly impressive. Did you Chelsea watch us against Villa last week? Did you watch us against Villa last week? Or Liverpool against <laughs> Crystal Palace last week? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, so I if did. all three clubs are not looking great, then... Yeah, but that's my point. There. That's my. That's exactly my point. City, uh, have the, have City the are the best of the three, if we're going to be honest. But I don't think the gap is that wide that you're going to say that City are just... Yeah, they won all their games, boom. It's not like that. I think that there's a few twists and turns to come. Yeah, but I, look, I don't care. We don't control what City and Liverpool do anymore. You know, all we can do is win each and every one of our games. Good point. And if we do that, maybe we win, maybe City beats us, but like that's all we can do. Our demons are noble, courageous, unmatchable, but our angels being overpowered become our fears. Therefore... Make space between them. Top of the league. See you next week, guys. Lovely way in which to end. Thank you very much, Michael. Speak to you again very soon. Take care. Diego's on. 
Yo. Hey, Laurie. How you doing, man? You seem a lot happier now than you did when I last spoke to you (laughs) on Wednesday. Um, And that was understandable. Today, uh, I I get um, the impression you're in a much better place. Yeah, uh, I'd say so. Um, It was an IFI performance. But before I get into all that, I hear you making comparisons to City Mm. and how much you truly believe that they're going to lose point. Making reference to that game today um, against uh, Liverpool. Sorry, my bad. Chelsea. Chelsea. I guess <laughs> Chelsea. And I wanted to just bring something to your attention. Now, you have to remember that they played Real Madrid home and away. Mm. Uh, they had just had their last game on Wednesday. And they had to travel all the way to London just yesterday to play the game today. And you could hear Bernardo Silva complaining bitterly about, you know, the fixtures and how Chelsea had had more time to rest. And mm. that performance doesn't really truly depict the full extent that City is going to go in the last the next game. So I just want to put it out there that that's a force to reckon with and it's their um, trophy to lose at the end of the day. Yeah, I hear that. Um, but listen, uh, that comes with the territory. I mean, I'm not going to start feeling sorry for City, man. I mean, they're victims of their own success. So at the end of the day, that's how it goes. Mm-hmm. And in fact, that kind of leads me into the point that I was making to Turkish. Um before we came on air and I asked one of the other callers the same thing, I'm going to ask you, do you think that our exit from the Champions League could be a blessing in disguise? Meaning that now we could focus all our energies on these remaining five games left. All I hear you say is bigger fish to fry. No, that's that's my brother that said that. Yeah, I've never I said those words. <laughs> <laughs> I am not guilty by association. I, those words have never <laughs> left my mouth. Yeah, because you're, you're saying blessing in disguise. That's your thing. Blessing in disguise is very different from uh, it's the bigger same fish thing. To fr- you know, it's listen, the same li- thing. Like, I want to make it clear, yeah, I fundamentally disagree with me and my brother have had some passionate arguments because I absolutely don't I believe that. that to be the case. <laughs> because for me, you go into a competition, you try to win it. I, I'm actually pretty angry at the way we we exited those domestic competitions this season because it means that you've only got a very limited window in which to, to have a successful season. So, but anyway, Absolutely. what did you think of the game today? Uh, so, you know, I like to speak from the heart, right? Sure. And I want to first say, uh, Turkish, I'm one of your biggest fans, man. We share the same perspective on almost everything. <laughs> you know, like, you're, you're my guy. Love and me. I know you owe, you owe me that hat, so I see you in uh, Philly. It's <laughs> <laughs> so um, today wasn't our best game, but it was a professional performance. You know, I felt relieved. It was very iffy. It was just a game of margins. It took brilliant performances. You know, um, Jesus' is, um, um, assist and that strike, that was not an easy strike from Charles Hart. And of course, the second goal was magical, I'd say, from Odegaard. And we could have easily drawn that game. You know, it would have been a goalless draw if not for those individual performances. So I feel relieved that we could still you know, pick up stuff from nothing and just make something happen, right? And that's one. And then again, of course, the Havas project. And just like the Super Chat um, that you read out, I, I just... I can't seem to not think that Havertz doesn't have something on at this point in time. Like <laughs> it's, it's 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 confusing. It does not work. Mm-hmm. Let him rest. Try Vieira. Try party. Try something different, right? And he kept trying to play double force nine, having one drop deep and the other, you know, just interchanging things around. And it just feel, it just feels like if you are able to stop the transition between um, um, the right back. Um, that's white to other guy to Saka. Then you know all the gameplay on the right hand side is almost null and void, and then nothing we can really do in, in that. So you have to actually do something different to be able to create chances. So ultim- um, ultimately, I like to say um, again, it was a professional performance. I'm relieved, but I'm not feeling very excited about Tuesday's um, engagement with Chelsea. I just hope that we take some lessons. Lessons like trying to learn how to shoot, for example, outside the box, you know, trying to do something entirely different and not having to take it back to the goalpost. So, I mean, that would be my take, just trying to learn how to do things differently. Shooting outside okay. the box. Okay, uh, let's stop you right there. I'm going to bring in your man Turkish because uh, you two 
Take it out. What you got to say about that, Turkish? Hey, he thinks along the same lines as I think, mm. innit? That's why I want you and, you and him to chop it up. <laughs> I think exactly the same with what he just said. He said he's, you know, the, the, the what you say, performance today didn't excite him. I, I get that, you know. I, not that I was looking for excitement, but it, it wasn't one that was exciting. It was one that we needed to get done. Um, hopefully we excite against Chelsea. It's another one we need to get done. But listen, if we can get the job done five, well, six more times, is it six, five more times? Five like more I said, times. I think we win the league. So, you know, <clears throat> it's... Essentially, I agree with you. We're all going to drop points. Mm. Essentially, I feel like we, we we've lost the league last season against Villa because I feel like all three of us are still going to drop points. But there's still a big chance that we can, and the only thing we can do is continue putting pressure. Havertz, you know my feelings on Havertz. Like, <laughs> I don't even want to talk about the guy like, because someone will clip me somewhere and then use it when he scores against. Luton yeah, don't Town worry about that, man. I mean, you speak no, it's not about I'm worried about. It's just piece. that there's no there's no like sense in the. In the football world anymore. I think a lot of fans now are starting to ask that question. I mean, I notice you used the phrase, I used the exact same phrase earlier on the stream. I call it the Havertz project. Because to me, it's becoming increasingly clear that the manager will not drop this guy at all. He won't. Uh, So if he's not playing in the false nine, he's going to accommodate him in midfield. Uh, But when he does that, he's doing it at the expense of people like Partey, who's now back fit, he wants to play. There was a, I'm, I'm not, Sure, if you saw the same footage as us, but you may have seen it. Uh, there was an injury to one of the players and the camera panned to the bench and you saw uh, Fabio Vieira sitting on the bench and the look he had on his face, honestly, I felt sorry for him. He had the look yeah. of a guy that think, what am I doing here? You know what I mean? I might as well not be here because he's completely overlooked and I don't think it's fair. But um, I, I, I don't think so as well. Yeah. And I, have you noticed this? I don't know how true this is, but this is my observation. Uh, I, I don't know if you, you know, noticed that in the final third, you know, when they we're trying to attack, even though our attacks in the final third haven't been as sharp as we want it to be, but there's a bit of reluctance to give Havertz the ball. Because once you give him the ball, he wants to go back or he wants to do a one-two pass. He's not trying mm. to create or do anything, no. you know, that the best earning um, attack, uh, attacker or, or best earning play and in, uh, in, in the team should do you know this is literally nothing compared to what an Odegaard would want to do or Saka would want to do mm. and obviously my last point is Saka's you know being off it at the moment that attempt on the 91st minute Saka of last year would move that ball off the, off the net mm. and you know it just didn't work out for him today and you, you say that though but he's still top of the charts in terms of both goals and assists so a lot of people have been coming for Saka recently but if you look at the numbers he's still been our best player Statistically. Statistically, you say. Uh, what does the eye test tell you, really? <laughs> in, the, in, the, in the past couple of, you know, in the past couple of games. But to be let's honest, be honest I, I thought he had a good game today. I honestly did. I, I don't think he was outstanding. And I think sometimes that's, that's the issue, isn't it? Sometimes you can be almost a victim of your own success. Like, if you're not tearing it up and, you know what I mean, and having a great game, people are going to downplay it and say, ah, oh, he didn't really do much. But actually, I thought he played well today. That's my personal I like, I like I like you, Laurie. You're so super positive, and I like that about you. <laughs> but if I'm being honest, he was below par, as usual. Really? And wow. it's okay. It's okay. it's okay. Like, we all have bad days in the no, office. No, no, I hear you, I just, bro. I hear you. No, I, just, no. I just like the guy, and I want him to, I want him rested, um, especially in the summer, we just got to do something, man. You know, we just have to have some sort of someone to deputize him, you know, moving forward. Now, I don't know if that's going to be a good thing because Saka comes across to me like a player that likes to play and play into form. I don't know resting him will limit him to the likes of Nelsons or ESRs. And I don't know. I'm not a professional in that mm. light. But whatever the manager decides, I'm up with it. Yeah, we have to. And just lastly on that Saka thing, um, Although, listen, I advocated for Saka. I thought he had he was decent today. But I don't know if you heard uh, what I said before the game started, but I was actually in favour of Reese Nell starting today over him because I yeah. do agree with you. Yeah, what Jay did in recent games. But having said that, he started and I thought his inclusion was justified based on what he did. He wasn't great, but I thought he was good. Uh, out of 10, I'd probably give him a 6.57. That's my personal opinion. But, but listen, bro. That's um, very generous. <laughs> I'm a generous guy, man. <laughs> but anyway, listen, man. Thank you very much for your call. Enjoy uh, Diego, talking to you as always. Love, man. Love, bro. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk speak soon. again man, soon. Man, talk you're my guy. 
Come on, man. Message me, message me, bro. Message me. Uh, all right, bro. Thank you very much. Come right, on. next caller. Who we got now? Jason. Jason. Uh, can you position hey, yourself hey, hey, to your left? Because you're slightly out of kilter, slightly out of fog. To your left. No, that's his left. Yeah, there he is. Can you see me? Yeah, yeah, we can see you, yeah. Right, so um, you've heard what myself and Turkish have had to say. Um, what's your thoughts on today's game? And are we back in the title race? I, I think we're fully back into the title race. And I think we should be positive yep. about our current situation, guys. Yeah. Um, yep. I think we are competing. And that is what we wanted uh, to compete. So uh, being here and competing after how many years... Uh, I, I think that is a, an accomplishment no, at I itself. I agree. I agree. I mean, listen, um, before today's game, my thoughts was we have to win today. It doesn't matter about the performance. So you're happy with competing forever then? But we, it, well, competing. Caller, did yeah, you hear that? Uh, Yes, 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 I hear you. Uh, I, I, I agree with Turkish. This is an accomplishment and stuff. Um, but I still think we need, and I, I agree with Turkish, and I'm, I'm grateful that you are still keeping it real on AFTV, that um, Saka is not performing at his level currently. And I think in the summer, or whenever it's summer there by your side, because I'm in South Africa, we need an upgrade or a competing factor in Saka's position. Upgrades, no. Competition, yes. I say upgrade, no. You should always look for a player that you think could potentially push and overtake the player in that position. But when you look at right wingers in the world, not everyone's easily attainable. Um, I think... I think Saka's, listen, the, the problem is people are too quick to, and I say people, I'm talking about Arsenal fans here. That's why, you know, we, we don't help ourselves at times. We're too quick to want to label people, we want to argue with people about our players are world class and our players are this and our players are better than yours. And it, that, it, it's, Saka, he, he's not world class yet. That's fine. He's a very, very good winger. There's not many right wingers in world football better than him. These are all true, but it's also true that he's not world class. That's fine. He's a good enough winger to start week in, week out for you in the league. It's just that we also need to get a better striker. We also need to... The reality is Martinelli's had a much poorer season than Saka. So I think we do need a superstar in the attack. But I think, you know, right now, we've seen in the last two years, which is probably fair that Saka's still either too young to be relied upon in crunch time in the biggest games to be the go-to guy. And, you know, he, that will come with age and experience or he's never going to be the go-to guy and he's going to be part of great teams, a cog in great teams, which is fine as well. You know, like, for example, Riyad Mahrez was a cog in the Man City machine that often, you know, didn't get, mentioned with De Bruyne and Rodri and, and, and Haaland and, you know, all these City legends and big players. But he played a massive part in title winning and, you know, Man City competing on multiple fronts. So we're still finding out what Saka is. This season, I'm happy with his development. You know, I think he's now found if he's not having a great performance, he can have an impact through GNA. But at the business end of the season so far, he'll know more than anyone that you know, he needs to do better. But we also need to do better as a club. We also need better players to push, to compete, to protect. So, you know, I don't I, I don't wanna I don't wanna as much as I, I, I can say Saka's not been on form, Saka hasn't been great in the big games this season. I can also say that he's still a quality player and he's still the one that starts week in, week out. We just need someone to help help him. Obviously, if, if we look at his numbers, obviously, we, if we look at his numbers, um, I don't agree with certain Man United pundits out there that says he's not uh, world class. Uh, his numbers are up there. But uh, as you've said and stated now, he is um, he's there. We just need someone there 
just to push him a little bit. And I think the reason, Nelson, uh, as Laurie have stated earlier, um, we need to trust this guy. We need to trust him in that position just to come in sometimes and just um, help Saka uh, in, in, in some games, uh, just to push him a little bit and also just to contribute uh, in certain certain games. Uh, I, I, I'm done with... I'm done with trying out some players now. I just, I just, you know, I, I don't, I don't want to go into next season. We need a goal, or we need something. And Eddie's coming on, or Reese Nelson's coming on, or Smith Rose coming. Just sort it out now. You know, we, we, we've tried and tested a lot of these players. Some not tested, but that's proof itself that we need to move on. And now I just want to have players either coming off the bench or coming into the first team where. You know, we're going to find out if they're the guy. We're going to find out how good they are rather than the same old players that year in, year out now, we, we, we know now. What are we, what are we trying to find out? Is Reese Nelson going to be the long-term backup for a second? No, we know this. Is, is Eddie and Ketcher going to be a striker at Arsenal much longer? No, we know this. Is Emil Smith-Rowe, has he done enough since coming back from injury to warrant you know a position moving no we know this so just sort it out now you know as much as what you started with is you know we're competing again yes 100 percent. that's what arsenal should be doing year in year out I think, we must um, win as if well I, if i could just say on the whole Saka debate i think it's important to realize that statistically even though he's not been at the heights that he was say last season Bukayo Saka tops the charts on both goals and assists for us. He's got 14 Premier League goals, right? Which is the most. I think the nearest next is Habits with nine. He's got seven assists. I think he's top joint assister with Odegaard now. Those are very, very good stats. I mean, listen. So you can say that, um, yes, he, he has looked a bit jaded in recent weeks and yes, he should be rested. I mean, I was in favour of uh, resting him for the first part of today's game, but he didn't. He played. Um, but I just want to put that out there because when people are saying drop him, drop him, drop him, in this case, more than habits, I can see why the manager would want to play him because he, he, even when he's not on top form, he's still giving you those numbers. So it's kind of hard to drop. Him. That, that's my thoughts on Saka. Like, you know, I, I actually thought he had a decent game today as well. I mean, I don't know what you think. I thought he played well. He wasn't outstanding. I'm looking at the ratings. He got a 4.2 out of 5. Um, Odegaard, who um, a lot of people were saying was man of the match, he got 4.4. Decker Rice was 4.3. So was, uh, so was Trossard. Those were the top uh, rated Arsenal players in the stats that I saw. So again, you see, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, he, he he played well today, I thought. But you know, there you go. Not for me. But for but me. that is not that is not the issue, Laurie. That that is not the issue. I I, I don't I don't question Saka's ability at all. Uh, my issue is that sometimes the team is working so hard to get Saka in, mm. and he's he's contributing when he gets the opportunity. Yes, but the team is working and spending so much energy to get him in and he is when he gets the ball in most cases he passes back um in many cases he loses the ball and i want james to do the stats on that one as well um because we play a lot of, around his corner around his corner and he gets his, his opportunity yes but how much does saka do when he we, we need that percentages as well that's all I want. <laughs> no, that's, you know, that's a fair, fair thing to say. I mean, Thomas Tuchel, no less, the manager of Bayern, Bayern Munich, he said before the start of the game when we played him in the week that most of Arsenal's attacks come down the right-hand side. They're more, far more, I think, I, I'm paraphrasing, but he, he basically said that Arsenal are a lot more effective down the right-hand flank than they are down the left. Now, Saka plays on the right-hand flank, so obviously he's talking about Saka in that regard but but listen man it, it's a very good debate uh, and I thank you for calling um, we've got a big game on Tuesday no problem thank you guys please, for having please, me please call nice back one. after that nice game one, on Jason. Tuesday let me hear what you say about Saka no problem bye bye okay take care right moving on to our last caller then oh he's the, <laughs> there he is the teed up massives in the house 
And he's got that look on his face, man. He's got that look on his face. I'm not quite sure where he's going to go with this. I'm assuming that he's happy with a win, but maybe he's not totally enthralled with a performance. But anyway, Elliot, my man, take it on from here. What are you saying? Turkish lawyer, how are you? Very good, man. Yeah, good. Yeah. How are you? How are you? I am in a mixed mood, you gentlemen. Look it. You look it, yeah. Yes, I'm quite Tell pensive today because I uh, l- l- let's 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 uh, get things straight. I'm happy with the win, of course. But you didn't want to see me on Wednesday. I was <laughs> very 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 peed mm. off, quite simply. Mm. Uh, with the, the effort one, with you the uh, the uh, with uh, uh, with our side and where things are going. And uh, let me say this to all of the Arsenal supporters, and you're entitled to your opinion, but we need to stop this inferiority complex that rips the side and being happy with where we are. I'm sorry, I'm with Turkish on this one. We need to start showing that we are one of the best sides in the world. And that means we need game changers in this team. I'm sorry. We haven't had a game changer here since the great Alexi Sanchez, great star pitch. And what did we Four win five years ago? We haven't what, what had anything we close to that since. Yeah, but what did we win with him in it? We didn't have the team for him, though. We didn't have the team he deserved. We won Thank FA you. Cups with him and we won FA Cup with Saka. So, you know, what is your point, really? What are you saying? The point you, is this. You don't want to... You don't want... No, but you said we've not had a game changer in the team since we had Alexis. And listen, I rate Alexis highly. But what I'm saying is, even with him in the team... We didn't win the Premier League, did we? We didn't come close to it, in fact. Because we didn't, we didn't have, have a side to win the Premier League, Laurie. We, mm. we, we weren't building a side worthy of a Premier League champ, uh, championship side. It's mm. as simple as that. Alexis Sanchez what is another level to Saka. You know that, now, right? Our game changer. No, you do know that, right? <laughs> Saka, um, it's Alexis I'm, Sanchez I'm, I'm kind of... was another level to Saka. Do you know this? Oh, you know that. You must tell know. Him, tell him, this, this tell is him, the, tell you can't be one of these him. fans, bro. <laughs> sorry, him. No, but the reason why yeah, I put Elliot. you up on that is sorry. because you yeah. called his name and we didn't win a title with him in the team. So we didn't win a title. Some people might say, look, did we, you're did calling we win a title with Van Persie as our nine? Right. Did, did we win a title with Van Persie as our nine? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so, but so what are you saying? Van P- no, I'm throwing think- it back to you. Lot, yeah, but you think, of, you think Alexis, Alexis Sanchez, or a Van P doesn't improve this side? Of course it of does. Of course it does improve. And when we go to Munich away, who are we looking at? Sanchez or Saka or Van Persie or Martinelli? We're looking at Van Persie, Sanchez. This is the talent. This is the elite Listen, if you'd have said Thierry Henry, then I would have said, yeah. But you're calling out a man's name that we never won the title or never come close to winning it with him in the team. So, I do not call out the man's name because of his stature in the side. I call out the man's name because we need game changers, like Alexis Sanchez. Like a man who said, give me the ball, I'm going to score you the goal. If you don't we don't have that here. Name me a player or, who you can just give a ball to Henry. and he'll score a goal for you, Laurie. Tell me, tell me. I want to hear from you. No, but with respect, that is not what you said. You said you need game changers and then you quoted... Alexis Sanchez and I'm saying as much as I rate Alexis he didn't deliver no titles for us so are you sure you want to be calling out his name if you'd have called out Henri's name Burkamp's name Vieira Tony Adams man like that I would have said yeah okay carry on but you called out a man's name I'm just calling out the last one the last one Mm. was Alexis Sanchez believe Mm. me I'd rather have a a Thierry Henry I'd rather have a Patrick Vieira I'd rather have a Dennis Burkamp in this lineup there's no doubt about that but the fact of the matter is, I'm calling out the last person we can literally give a ball to and say, win us a game. Can you call out a man like that in this side right now? No, because we are too much of a systematic team. We have players to play within Arteta's system. We don't have men who we can just literally give a ball to and say, go win us that match now. Mm. Until we get those game changers, my friend, we will not be winning leagues. We will not be winning Champions League. I'm sorry, we won't be doing it. We won't do it. Mm. Uh, and maybe that's a pre, uh, and if I'm uh, proven wrong this year, so be it. But the fact of the matter is, the the fa- the supporters need to get this thing straight in their heads. Yes, they're happy with their position, but we need to demand more from this club. Need to demand more from Adu. Need to demand more from Arteta because, simply put, <laughs> they're doing their best, but the best isn't good enough. Can I tell you what it is, yeah? Let's not forget Fabregas come out. Vampy came out in a similar fashion. Fabregas come out and said, 
one time after a loss, I looked around the coach and there was only two, three serious men around me. And that's when he realised that this club is not building on him. They're relying on him. Let's not do that with these young men as well. We've literally gone through the same shit. Yeah. So it's not, it's no disrespect to ask for a superstar and a, and, a, and a better player in certain positions. It's no disrespect to the man we have because they would want that as well. All right, I'm going to throw something at you both now, right? And with respect, don't take this personal, but I, I do think it's something that is worthy of consideration. Do you not both think that the two of you are being slightly premature? Because if I didn't know you guys better, it's almost like you're talking after the event, like you're saying, until we get this, until we get that. We There's five games to go and we, we're still very much in it. As, as it stands today, we're actually a point to the good. We're actually above City, we're topping the table. So you, you man saying things like, yeah, and two it is, and two we do that. You don't know. We could still win the title. Yeah, but we we're not talking that. about winning the title. We're not discounting that. We're saying that. No, but that's what Elliot said. He goes, until we get game changes, we're never going to win the title. That's what you said, right? And I'm saying to you, I said, if I'm proven wrong, go, I'll hold my hands up. I'll hold no, my hands up. You could very well be wrong. You is... could well be wrong. So I'm saying, are you not being slightly premature in your assertion, my friend? Hey. I'll hold my hands up if I'm premature. I'll go with I'll go with that. But what Turkis and I are saying is the fact that we're planning for years ahead. We're planning not for this year. We're planning for three, four, five years down the road. And what and the reason why the likes of Man City are winning three or four or five titles in a row is the fact that they have game changers in their in their team. If they want to go, oh, give it to uh, 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 you know, give it to uh, to game changers. We don't have that in our in our club, and uh, once we get those game changers in the club, then you'll start seeing titles, and I mean multiple ones. So what Turkish and I are trying to say is, yes, let us push on, let us try and win this title now. But the fact of the matter is, if we're going to do so in the future, if we're going to get into the latter rounds of the Champions League, and I mean semifinals and finals, sorry, it takes game changes. Okay, I hear that. Mm -hmm. But let me let me ask you this, yes. Yeah? So if we win the title. You've already conceded that you'd be prepared that you got it wrong. Let me float another um, hypothetical argument to you. What happens if we win all our games or close to it and the title comes down to the last day and we don't quite get it across the line? Would you regard this season as failure then? Ah, good question. <laughs> well, I'll answer it. Yes, it would. It, it, you know, we would have failed in the objective to win the title. So no, yes. no, that wasn't my question. No, my but question that is, is your question. You no, it's not. You I said, just you, you, regard... you want it to be classed as failure, failure because it's, it's it more hard. It's no, more I said, hard. Would you regard hitting. the season as a failure? I, I did put the caveat in that we push City all the way. Now, listen. If we lose to Chelsea and lose to Man United and the title's done with three weeks to go, then I'm with you. It's a failure. But what, that wasn't my question. My question is, if we push City all the way and we lose that by, say, a point or goal difference, would you regard the season as failure? Be honest, would you, yes or no? Yes. Because I yeah, don't think I that would. is a failure. I don't think I would. Is. Do you think Arteta Man, had you... time to get game changers in this summer? He didn't do it. Man United, that year that they lost the title to Aguero moment against QPR, do you think they see that as a successful season? As failure. Regardless of his goal difference, regardless of his last-minute goal in another game, the objective of the elite clubs, the biggest clubs, which, listen, we've always been elite in name and brand, but we're big again in terms of on the pitch, should be to win the major trophy. Yeah, absolutely. So but what I'm saying is at the start of the season, it, Turkish, did it. you predict that Arsenal were going to win the title? Be honest. I predicted you didn't, did that with challenge. Yeah, exactly. And so if we push them to the last game of the season, mm -hmm. then we have challenged them. Yeah, that but, is a challenge. But it doesn't make it success. If I've made a prediction that we No, I didn't say about that. I said, would you regard it as a failure? It's What's not a success, a failure? it's not a failure so either. It's a failure success. No. So you, you, it's the same thing. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. There's a nuance as, there. as, the, as my man, uh, uh, Ricky Bobby from Talladega and I said, if you're not first, you're last. Hmm. Yep. Interesting. Okay. Interesting. Now, listen, you know what? I hear, first, I hear that. You're last. I hear that. I hear that. But I think it's more it nu is. nuanced than that. Uh, but I'm going to ask you one last question before we go. Um, we've spoken a lot about the title. Uh, how confident are you against Chelsea for Tuesday? They lost today, obviously. We won. Got them on we're Tuesday. We're at home, night. I'm rather confident. You're, what if we're say? at home, I'm rather confident. The, the big, the big uh, test will be when we go to, uh, when we go to, uh, to the, well, Thomas. that hole down the lane. <laughs> 
Well, okay. Thank you very much for that. And thanks for your call, bro. I appreciate your mm. forthrightness and your Derek, honesty. Derek, I'm with you all the way, buddy. Laurie, I love I love the banter. You know me already. Yeah, man, it's all good. It. Listen, man, yeah, I, you know me, I, I love to debate. I love sport. I love to debate. Everyone's got their opinions, man. That's what makes these things so uh, entertaining for me. So, yeah. Great but win, listen, great chat, guys. Thank take you. Care, Absolutely. Yeah, take care. Take care. Thanks for the call. Right, okay, so pretty lively debate there. Um, Let me just round off the super chats because sure. I think a few did come in whilst we was talking. Where are we? Where are we? Um, I got that one in. So Lee again came back with, who was the last world-class player to wear the number nine shirt? World-class finishers score when it matters and take any chance. Right now, only Declan is world-class. He steps up all the time. And funnily enough, that super chat actually came in before we was talking about Sanchez and Van Persie, but that's exactly what he, I know Lee's talking about. Listen, if you're going to say Declan Rice is world-class, I wouldn't argue with that because I think he is world-class. But then you can't say Declan Rice is world-class and Saka isn't, surely. It, I think Declan Rice is closer to being world-class than Saka. But why not? It's why would you say that? It's different positions. It's different, oh, yeah, obviously it's different, different positions. Different, but Different responsibilities. Would you not say output. that Saka is currently one of the best right wingers in world football yeah but the pool is not so great. surely that makes him world class no, because the pool is not great <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> no but it's almost like you move in the goalposts a little bit bro why because you had you acknowledge that he's one of the best right backs in the world uh, yes some people that, would say he's the, but the best but I'm the context that. to that is the pool is not great that the, there's context to that just saying that is the metric for him being world class or others. I don't want people to feel we're just getting to the Saka. This whole world class thing is it's very a, subjective. Thrown about very, it is. very yeah. easily in this modern day. But what I'm saying, and I listen, I'm not arguing about Declan Rice. I rate that guy very, very highly. But what I'm saying is, if Declan Rice is world class, then surely Saka's got to be in that conversation. But anyway, carry on with the super chat. Um, next, Lee again saying, Laurie, you just yeah. spoke about small club mentality. If we are a top side, leaving any competition is not a blessing in disguise. Mm, fair enough. Trophy but I, I was just blessings. floating it out there that maybe the fact that we've gone out of the Champions League, the positive to that is that at least with that out the way now, you can focus all your energies, intentions and efforts on the five games left. Because, you know, b beforehand people were complaining, oh, two games in a week, oh, the players are tired. That excuse is now removed. Yeah, mm -hmm. let's go for it. And last one again from Lee. Thank you for the super chat. Said Saka and Martinelli need a midfield that pulls defenders like Granite and Martin did last season. Play Partey, Declan Odegaard, and you'll see them perform one hundred percent. Listen, man, I'd love to see it, but apparently the manager is not uh, for whatever reason, man. He's obviously got his uh, his reasons. Um, we don't know what they are. We just have to go with what the manager does. Um, but I must admit. And I'm speaking to a lot of fans. I was at the gym today and at least two men, at least two men that I spoke to today, actually it was more than two, three, come up to me today and say, why isn't Party starting in midfield? Why isn't he getting more minutes? What's happened to Vieira? Why is Smith Rowe not playing? Um, and the manager, when uh, Kai Havertz is not playing up top, he drops him back into midfield. And the others subsequently are not getting a look in. And I find that kind of hard to um, get my head around. As I'm sure you do. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's, it, it, is, it is what it is. Mm. It is what it is now, Laurie. Like we, you know, we, <laughs> no, listen, I'm just, I'm just thinking out loud, bro. But that's how I feel. Uh, and I know you, I know you don't want to be labelled a point. Fair enough. No, no. People are calling you the habit hater, and you got an agenda. But no, for me, Odegaard's an eight. Like that's I've, it, that's my opinion. I think Odegaard's more an eight. I think Odegaard would work well with Martinelli on that side, and whoever left back comes in, and I think we could get a better ten. You know, mm. like a Wurtz or a Musiala or someone who's got you know a bit more about them in the tempers. Because I love Odegaard, mm. but Odegaard's. I think I think Odegaard's perfect for the eight. He's got the mix of defence and, and yes, attack. Yes. Whereas in a number 10 position where you might want a bit more of the attack side of things, I think Musiala or Wurtz, these kind of players mm. suit it more. Equally, I wouldn't mind a Frankie Dion coming into the eight and there's two eights, which seems to be what Arta to really want. So mm. there's options there, but... We'll see. we'll see. We will see. We will but see. Anyway, okay. Unless you've got any more super chats or any more no, comments you want to read, uh, I I'll, thought I'll one came up. in, but no, it was it was something else. It was something okay. else. Okay. 
Okay, in closing then, thanks everybody who called into the full-time show today. Really enjoyed it. Thanks to my man Turkish for Love. assisting me on the programme. Thanks for everybody who submitted comments, super chats. Thanks for everybody who supports um, AFTV. Uh, AFTV, whom I like to call the one-stop shop for all your Arsenal content. Don't forget on Tuesday we go again. Arsenal take on Chelsea at home. Should be a great game. Looking forward to it. And I do think we can get the win and um, keep the title race alive. Thanks very much, guys. See you on Tuesday. We are out.